Just gonna figure it out as we go. I have the cops on the phone right now. I'm sorry. Mister, superheroes don't fly or look like Jesus. They drive broken down cars. They take their kids with them no matter where they go or how bad things get, and sometimes they make mistakes just like anyone else. Don't trust these people. Just me and my wife. You guys uh, kind of became my family. Never realized before. You need me as much as I need you. Congratulations on your directorial debut, a beautiful film that wouldn't have been easy for someone who I think had directed 10 films. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so let's start with somewhere easy. Why this film? Why was this the first one that you were going to direct? What was it about this story? Well, I have to say, uh, Jane Rosenthal has been a friend of mine. Um, and she Give it up for Jane Rosenthal, everybody. Yes. Amazing that we have her here right now. Sorry to interrupt, but... And uh, she urged me to do an ESPN 30 for 30. And so I did one on Nadia Komenich. And um, that gave me a lot of confidence to go behind the camera again and, and find some material to direct for a, as a narrative. And so I've, I read this book. And I felt that that line that you saw in the trailer where Ruthie says, um, superheroes drive broken down cars, and they take their kids with them wherever they go. That felt so relatable to me, um, to the values that I grew up with, to, to so many moms that I have met and, and so many people that I've met. And I just felt like that was such a great theme of the book and, and that it had a cinematic quality to it. And then I gave it to Jane. I said, should we do it? <laughs> and she said, yes. So here we are. Oh, just like that. <laughs> we're, it worked we're, fast, you know? Were you ever nervous about casting yourself and sort of being behind the camera as well as in front of the camera and how that could affect either, either or? The whole thing was uh, scary to think about all at once, but when I, I'm, I'm an actress and when you read a good role, you want to take it. Um, so I always wanted to play Rita. Um, and I actually really enjoyed being acting in the movie and directing because I got to act with my very talented cast and um, be effective within the scenes. Um, and so that was, that was really rewarding. You cast the film incredibly well. Everyone's wonderful in the film. Svania, you play her daughter. And I have to say, the first scene between the two of you was like, oh, that's great casting that looks like her daughter. That's incredible casting. But then you're also a wonderful performer. How did you, how did you find her? What was the process like? Well, we were very fortunate. Um, Stefania is hugely talented and so natural. And um, yet we cast her about two weeks before we started shooting and she was in New Zealand. And um, so we didn't have a lot of time to, re to rehearse and to pull off being a very close mother and daughter, but um, luckily she's so gifted that we, you know, we got right into it. And a lot of the scenes, um, you know, we would do the dialogue as scripted and then we would just play and, and do uh, improv a scene because so much of a 
mother-daughter relationship is behavioral. And so we wanted to make sure that was there. And so much of the film is about naturalism and also stumbling across some, some sort of point or something that is relatable rather than sort of teaching and telling the audience. Were you nervous at all going into the film? There's a, a lot on your shoulders in, in this role. Uh, I was, I mean, I was a little bit nervous. I was really excited though. Uh, once I got to New York, because everything happened really fast, I auditioned a week before I actually got cast. So it was like, it was, uh, extremely like last minute, so I um, it didn't really hit me that I was doing a film with Katie until I got there and we started. But um, it was, I think, what made it so easy was just the way that Katie or the way that you treat um, treated all of us as a cast and as a crew, and it felt so comfortable. And from the first day I met Katie, it never felt um, stressful, or it, it just felt like we had known each other for a very long time. So um, I think that, you know, we, we became close really fast. And um, even as a whole cast, we became extremely close just by the way that um, Katie got us to get together all the time. And we went to lunch before we started <laughs> filming. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, was, it was a little bit daunting before I met everybody, but once I did and once um, I, I met Katie, it was easy. Eve, you have a, a, a really great role in the film, uh, a, a part that we rarely get to see uh, in film. Can you talk about your character? Uh, yeah, my character's name is Pam, uh, and she is a waitress uh, who works at her uncle's diner, and she's a woman of trans experience. And um, yeah, I mean, she was she's just a really well-rounded character. You find out she wants to be a performer and she, um, you know, is very vibrant and full of life. And um, I think she meets Stefania's character, Ruthie, and they both sort of kind of indulge each other's like, you know, hopes and dreams and thoughts. And, you know, it's just like having someone who listens. Jane, um, what was it about this story when, when Katie brought it to you that made you want to take on the film as a producer? Well, I love anything that's um, about universal themes and particularly uh, family relationships, um, whether it's a meet the parents or an about a boy uh, or all we had, and particularly the mother-daughter relationship, uh, both as a, as a mother and as a daughter. There's so much of it that you can relate to no matter where you are in life. And I, I also thought it was an extraordinary role for Katie and something that we could do in a finite period of time and uh, that she would be a remarkable Rita and we had to do it. Katie, uh, one of the things that I love about your performance and what you do with the film is that you don't soften Rita at all. There isn't this element of her that's like, as much as she wants to be a good mother, you don't soften her mistakes. They're, they're there and they're clear as day. And you can, as you're watching the film, you can only see that she's kind of gonna make more mistakes for a certain period of time. Was there ever a part of you that sort of had trouble or worried about how much you should or should not soften, soften her? Um, I never thought about softening her. I, I loved Rita from the, from the book. Um, and one of the things that I really connected with in this story, the, the characters were very authentic and they were going through real life struggles. And Rita to me is a person who is easily judged by others and yet she does have a really good heart and she is trying to do the right thing and her compass is her child. But she's human and she's flawed and she's, you know, she's got good in her and, and, and bad in her and, and um, everybody does. And so she, she felt to me very real. And what I liked about the relationship between Rita and Ruthie is there was this complexity that involved, you know, sometimes it was Thelma and Louise, um, sometimes Ruthie was the mom and Rita was the daughter a lot of times. And then um, we, we got to see Rita growing into being a better mom and really starting to have some more self-awareness as the movie went on, but also the ability to start trusting people and form a relationship with Pam. And there was a healing that took place, particularly because they met such nice people at the diner. And so I, I liked 
those pieces and I felt like um, it's nice to put those things out in the world. And I like that the, the people that she meets in the, in the diner are also not saints. They have moments of mistakes or, or, or bad days as well. No one in the film gets to be painted as a saint. Maybe Luke Wilson a little bit, but that's just Luke <laughs> Wilson. He's just so sweet-natured. You can't not paint him as a saint. Um, were, when you were directing yourself, what did it take for you to get used to it? It's something that I've always been fascinated with when directors direct themselves, because if you're on camera, you never want to seem vain. You never want to seem like you're asking for too much. But as you're the director, you're like, what is it like to ask for a third or fourth take for, your, for yourself? You know, How did you get used to that? Well, I found this whole experience to be incredibly um, humbling because you have an idea and then it's like I went to Jane and, Jane and I was like, is this a good one? And then she <laughs> says, yes. And then you go to another person, and it's like, okay, well, do you want to come on board? And do you want to come on board? And then you start to involve all these people in the same goal. And when you're acting in that as well, you kind of have to give up any sort of care about whether or not it was a good take or bad, because you need people watching your back. And you're going to have some bad moments that don't work. But it's all part of the process. And what... I enjoyed about this is that we, we started prepping about a year before we started shooting. We were all watching movies to inspire us. This was, in, you know, the look of it was inspired by my own private Idaho. Alice doesn't the live best here. Movie. Yes, Alice doesn't live here anymore. Um, a woman under the influence, Panic in Needle Park. Um, and we were sending inspiration photos back and forth, and we were all on the same page. Um, and by all, I mean our cast, um, Jane, Barry, our producer, our cinematographer, Brett, Brett Pollock, our production designer, Michael Fitzgerald. And so we were a team, and the movie kind of took on a life of its own, and you kind of don't have an ego, because you're all trying to achieve the same thing. And that gets you to, to sort of be at the place where when you're on set, if you did a take or something that you were unsure of, you can look to everybody and know that you trust them enough to be like, can we move on? Was that good? Do I need to do another one? Right, right. Eva, what? But don't, oh, yeah. Excuse me, but don't mistake the power of uh, and the strength of Katie Holmes, the director, knowing how to direct herself. Uh, I personally think this is uh, one of Katie's best performances, and she directs herself so beautifully. And she has, a, she has the instinct to, sorry, I'm talking about you in third person present, <laughs> but she has the instinct to know when it's, when it's right, when it's enough, and, and to move on. Yeah, absolutely. And she was that way, too, in the cutting room. As, as well as the instinct to get the, best, the absolute best collaborators with, with her as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Eve, what was it like for you to, to, to get this role? Uh, it was it was so exciting. It was a great, great moment. I called my parents, and they were with uh, my grandmother. Um, and that, this was the last time I talked to her. She passed away. And the last time I talked to her was telling her I got this role. Um, and she was so excited, and it was... It was a dream come true. I mean, I didn't totally know exactly what it would end up being, but um, I was thrilled. Can you talk about casting Richard Kind? It's an incredible cast that you have in this film, not just who's on stage, but uh, who everyone that's in the film. Well, um, I mean, Richard, it was such a gift to have him play Uncle Marty, and we were so lucky that he said he would do this. and. You know, we've all watched him for many years, and um, it was great because we found this diner called Ralphie's um, in Munsee where we were shooting, and the owner of the diner had these terrific stories about the customers that came in, and, hit, and we, we watched him with customers, and he had this wonderful relationship. And um, Richard kind of used some of that for Uncle Marty, and um, it was really fun to watch. Stefania, uh, for you as a, as a young actress, what was it like sort of being surrounded by all this in, incredible talent? It was really surreal. Um, I mean, it was a really intensive shoot, so I felt so immersed in the character that 
it wasn't until after we filmed that I could actually like, like breathe and relax. Um, so, but I, I seriously, I, it didn't actually hit me probably till we finished filming, you know, because it was so intensive. But um, yeah, we just became close as a, as a cast and a crew. And so it just, it was a very special film um, for me. And it, uh, I learned so much from Katie's directing, from being amongst all of um, the amazing uh, cast members. And um, I've taken so much away from this film for my other jobs um, later. You shoot some in, in incredibly difficult and, uh, and emotional scenes. What was uh, one of the most difficult moments you had while shooting the film? One of the most challenging, excuse me. Um, I think there were a few scenes where I had to um, kind of go into a darker place, but, um, and one of them was a scene with uh, Eve where we're in the trailer, and I, you, you see it in, that, um, in the little preview, but I think even though it was challenging, I think because we were so close and we trusted each other, it was easy to get to that place. And with Katie's directing and her ability to pull things out of um, the actors, it, it was actually easier than I thought. And I learned a lot from myself um, from filming that scene and other scenes where I had to get deeper into um, my kind of more dark emotions. But um, yeah, I think that was probably the, cha the most challenging scene. And it, that scene was... I remember on set, it was one of the most exciting scenes to watch unfold because uh, they they went off the book and they uh, were just you know expressing what it would be like if this was really happening to them. And they were doing an incredible job. And then we were finding different shots uh, in the moment because of what they were doing. So we were, the camera was sort of reacting to uh, their emotion, which um, is really exciting um, because, you know, you don't... I think one of, the, one of the great things about making a film is when there's that spontaneity and to not always know that the camera is going to be over there and you're going you're gonna to sit here and talk. It's, it's really exciting when the actors do something and you go... Oh, oh wait, let's move the camera over here because that's all we need, what they just did, that says everything. So I remember this scene so vividly and it was just really, really exciting because they're both so so gifted. Was that something that you wanted to create on the set? I mean, I, I mean you might have already answered this when you said that you would sort of put the script down and say, all right, let's sort of do this in our, in our own words, was to kind of create an experience where your actors could improvise a lot more? Well, I... Before we started shooting, I, I was sent an interview that John Cassavetes and Gina Rollins did, and he was talking about women under the influence and how uh, he would just not even tell her when the camera was rolling because he was just blown away by what she was doing. And he would get angry at the crew if they would you know, let on for certain things um, or not let her know exactly where it was. Or, um, and I was really inspired by that. Um, and I love the way that those films came together. Um, and so I really did go into this wanting to do takes where we were off book. Um, because I find that the behavior between characters is so much more interesting than dialogue. Absolutely, the, the expressions on people's faces that you're not expecting, and sometimes even when people don't know their lines or don't have lines, the faces they make express so much more about what's going on in that moment. Um, Eve, you mentioned you're, you know, the character is a woman of trans experience. It's a rarity that we get to have women of trans experience uh, on film and in TV. I, I think the voices are growing and we're seeing more and more, and it's a wonderful thing. Um, were you surprised at all uh, at, at getting this part, that this part was there, that this story was being told? Uh, I mean, I think I, I wasn't necessarily surprised. I mean, I think, you know, people exist, like real people exist in the world and um, I exist in the world. So I know that, you know, this story exists. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know, I mean, I think I think it's it's a bit of an edgy story, so it 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 had some ed edgy characters in it. Um, 
but I won't say I was surprised. Well, because there are, I think, so few stories being told uh, about the trans experience, was there a part of you that felt a responsibility for a greater represent that this character was great, represents something of a greater whole, rather than just sort of be truthful to this character? Did you ever worry about that? Uh, I definitely worried about it, but um, ultimately, Pam is one person, um, and it was something that Katie and I talked about. Um, about her as a person being real and authentic. And um, I, there was so much there for me to kind of live with that I had to make the choice to like just stay with her and not um, think of any bigger repercussions. But I think that, you know, I mean, that is also a real part of, of the trans experience is like understanding that it's, you know, there's danger and um, that we as a community are, are not, you know, have a ways to go. Absolutely. Uh, Jane, when someone approaches you with, a, you've produced so many films at this point in your career, so many incredible films, when someone approaches you like Katie did and, say, and says, I, I, I want to do this project, what do you think? How do you know over the course of developing something when it's ready? Um. When you have the money and the cast and, uh, you know, you're ready. And uh, sometimes you might have all that and you're not ready. But uh, in this business, when you have, uh, when all the elements come together as a producer, you better be ready fast. Uh, Katie kept, uh, keeps referencing John Cassavetes as one of her inspirations. I, I agree. I think he's one of the most incredible filmmakers of all time. But he was also, in many ways, a nightmare for a producer. When she was saying, I want to make this like a John Cassavetes movie, were you ever like, well, I, I, I pump the brakes a little bit. Let's be a little more organized. No, um, I was proud of her for reaching for John Cassavetes. Um, the one thing that Katie did that we all had an opportunity to do was prepare. And uh, the more you prepare, the more you'll be ready for all these um, happy accidents to happen or spontaneity to happen on screen. So as far as, um, so I was just happy she was reaching for the best and also for her own voice within it. Absolutely. Let's open it up to the audience for questions. Who has questions out there? Right here. You. Uh, hi, my name is Sasha. My question's for Katie. Um, I had a question. I know this is your directorial debut and you've directed two episodes of The Kennedys coming up. I was wondering if you have any aspirations to write, maybe like your own script or something like that, and like the difference between directing this and directing The Kennedys. Well, uh, the difference between directing this and directing The Kennedys, um, I directed one episode out of four of The Kennedys and that already had a certain look to it and, um, and a certain feel, but I got to create within those boundaries and um, that was definitely a more s glamorous world <laughs> than, than this world, um, but it was equally challenging and uh, very inspiring. Um, I think at some point it would be useful and uh, nice to write something. It's I think things kind of come to you when they come to you. Did this uh, did this come to you as a script already adapted from the book, or did you work with the writers to adapt it from the book? Uh, we worked with the writers. Josh Boone adapted this, and Jill, um, and we worked with them. Yeah. Next question. Hey, uh, so I was just wondering, uh, what was it like? What was the big takeaway from uh, doing the film, like as an actress and um, also as a person? What was your big takeaway uh, from the film, as an actress and as a person? Again, I learned so much about acting, and also, um, I mean, I really want to direct now. Just watching Katie um, kind of switch hats and be able to go from being a director to an actor, but um, I learned a lot about getting into character. Katie told, I remember, because I'm, I'm playing a 14-year-old, and at the time I was 17, and that's actually quite a big jump, um, but she told me to um, 
listen to music that I listened to when I was 14 and kind of immerse myself in uh, um, watch movies that I used to watch when I was 14. And I, I learned a lot about getting into character and kind of going the extra mile. And that's something that I'll, I'll definitely take away and I already have and um, I've used for other projects. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on. I'm similar to what Stefania was saying. I just, I learned so much about this craft, um, about how you behave on set, about, um, you know, who you ask for things from, <laughs> um, and advocating for your own needs when you are confused about something or, you know, um, yeah. It was, I mean, watching Katie act and direct, I remember being in the diner and watching you jump up and down before your takes sometimes and, you know, just learning how every person approaches this differently. Um, and, you know, you sort of arrive at, at what works for you um, was a big one. Do you want to answer that question too? Um, what did you take away as an actress? Or as a director? Well, I think that I, um, I really appreciate what actors, like what this cast gave to me. And like I said, it was a very humbling experience because so many people gave so much of themselves. Everybody here did. And you just feel so grateful that like everybody is there and you're all together doing this together. I have a whole a greater appreciation for actors after the editing process because you find so many moments that you don't necessarily see on the day and you see these these beautiful things that um, you know like Stefania and Eve did that just that are very very magical and so as an actor it made me inspired to do another take, ask for another take, always give another version of your interpretation because that's just helpful to the editor and to the director and um, can, can make a difference in a story. I think we have time for one more question. Hello, I actually had two questions. My first one is for Katie. I wanted to know as a director, was there any challenges that you faced that you weren't expecting? And for everyone, I wanted to know, has this movie made you rethink the relationship with your mother? Whoa. We'll let Katie answer first, and you guys can think about that one for a minute. I think the challenge as a, in taking on directing was it's just taking on a job you've never done before. So it's, you're, you're always saying, oh, <laughs> Oh, is that my responsibility? Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, you're answering another question, which is, which is really, um, it's good. And um, I think the, the biggest challenge was, you know, I think the editing was um, something that I just wasn't used to, because as an actor, you're performing, and as, you know, you're used to being on set, and when you're editing, you know, you're in a room looking at, a monitor all day, and that's an adjustment. Um, and it's a different kind of skill set that you have to adapt to. Your mom. <laughs> My mom is actually sitting right at the back right there. So you have to say, uh, say something nice. Exactly. <laughs> um, in the film, um, there's a line where Ruthie says to her mom, um, I never realized before, you need me as much as I need you. And I mean, it, it, did, it, it did make me think, and it's true. I mean, I, I do need my mom so much, and I think every um, daughter, every son needs their mother, but you don't, you don't realize how much a mother needs their, their child. And um, so that did make me think, but I think um, the film is very um, authentic, authentic in how it shows a relationship between a mother and a daughter because you have your ups and your downs, but at the end of the day, no matter what, you, you love each other and you have a fight and a minute later, you're, you're good. Everything's okay. So, I mean, it just kind of made me more grateful for my mom. 
Um, yeah, this movie actually really changed a lot with my relationship with my mother. Uh, my mom, my biological mother is very similar to Rita. She's a woman with a habit of running towards risk. And um, I think coming off of this movie, I found a new sympathy for her and a new understanding and um, faith in that she tried her best and did the best she could. And um, it's there's something really great about that. <laughs> Absolutely. I think a lot of people will come away from this movie with that feeling, not about your mother, but just about Rita in, in general. About my mother. I don't mother. know your mom, yeah. but yeah, just about Rita in general. Um, the movie, how can people see All We Had? When can people see it? Uh, they, they can see it here in New York on 34th Street, uh, the AMC on Friday, uh, as well as other select theaters uh, across America, and also on VOD and iTunes, I believe, on Friday. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Congratulations on your beautiful film, an incredible achievement. Thank you so much. Thank you.